and for the time being it's like i'm so tired of healing i'm so tired of showing up every week at therapy and doing the work i'm so tired of having to always learn from all these experiences in my life instead of just being able to have a good experience and fucking enjoy it i'm tired of having anxiety i'm tired of having ocd i'm tired of my mental health being shit i'm tired of the way my body looks and gaining weight i'm tired of being a single parent and having no help i'm just tired like sometimes you just can't even fight anymore because all your fight is done Hello, stranger. It's been a minute since we last kid by the way just got in town and i won't let guys welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new and if you are a new girl <laughs> i'm sorry this is your first video because <sighs> i'm doing this new thing on my channel where it's going to be called dakota's diary if anybody if any other youtuber on here like has taken that i'm so sorry if i'm copying you i literally do not mean to but like I, that's just i don't know my initials a d diary dakota's diary <laughs> Yeah, so um, today I'm going to be getting ready with you guys. I don't have anything to do today. I have to actually have to kind of make it semi-quick, even though I know this video is definitely going to be at least 45 minutes to an hour, um, because I have to pick up Aubrey from school um, at 3.30. But yeah, like I just, I have been trying to sit down for the past four days and make a damn story time i was just, it, it was not giving like it was not if you are a creator here on youtube you know what i'm talking about when you come on and you try to be all like hey guys welcome to my channel and like you want to literally like yourself like no i'm just kidding um i'm gonna take that out actually no i'm probably gonna leave it in because it's funny but um no like you just you don't care like you're just like you know what i'm saying like you're just you're fucking depressed you're depressed okay um yeah so today i was like you know what like I'm gonna come on here and do a get ready with me and just like talk about what's been going on where my mental state has been because I know for a hundred percent fact that I am not the only person that is feeling this way that is going through something and suffering is truly 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 alleviated when we can realize right that we're not going through it alone like when we realize there's other people out there who are also going through things and who are also you know maybe not feeling 100 percent their best it's alleviated when that happens i believe so girl go grab something i've got a starbucks right here we're just gonna do our makeup and chill okay so what's been going on <laughs> in my life well first of all my room right now is an absolute i don't even know if y'all can see it i didn't clean up at all before this but my room's an actual fucking hot mess, like literal hot mess. I never let my room get like this. Um, my house is always like 100% clean and so is Aubrey's room, but my room up here, I can just like for the past week, month, let me not even lie, month, I can't keep this shit clean to save my life. And I always say like your space is always a direct representation of what is going on in here right and i just feel like lately my mind has just been not the best place to be and you know it, it's crazy because like i know what i have to do to change it and i feel like so many people who struggle with mental health or just struggle with life in general can probably relate to this but i just feel like nobody really talks about it like so many people come on here and they want to like and i'm not bashing them but so many people want to come on here and just do content for like entertainment or content where it's like look at my perfect life and for me i just feel like that doesn't help anybody because there's people out here who are going through real life depression who are literally only here for their kids because they don't want to leave them without like a parent and they're coming on to youtube and seeing somebody buy like a fourth ferrari for the week like you know and i feel like it's sad but in the youtube space drama and big sean says it best drama makes for the best content because you know what i'm saying like drama like that kind of content just does so well but then you gotta be fucking kidding me this is gonna be my 13th reason i know i have another brow um i know i have another brow pencil too it is because i can't find anything in this room and like the last time that i felt this just like depressed was like probably when me and adrian first broke up in like 2017 and i was like going through my freaking first spiritual awakening which i know all this is for like a greater purpose but it's like damn you 
can't give a bitch a break. I just feel like I'm always going through a transformation. And I just wish I was talked about more. Like, the first thing that I would say is probably... Okay, yeah, so I was saying before, like, I know what I have to do to change it. But I don't have the motivation to, right? It's like, that's why my content's been so just, like... Because I'm just not feeling myself. And, you know... But the thing is, is, like, even when you're depressed, if you have, like, a 9 to 5, like, girl, you still gotta show up to that freaking job. And, like, YouTube is no different. So I've decided that when I feel like this, this looks horrible. I'm just going to sit down and kind of talk to y'all instead of coming on here and doing a story time. But I was telling my therapist the other day, I was like... I have this crippling, crippling, crippling loneliness where I could be in a room full of people. I could be with like literally like 20 people laughing, having a good old time, drinking, shooting the shit, and I could still feel so alone. It's giving very Austin Ames. But no, I'm being so serious. Like I've been that way my whole life. I've just always felt like I, my whole life I've always felt like I am like a literal square trying to fit into a circle i don't feel like i fit in anywhere i don't feel like there's anybody who a hundred percent understands me I just feel so under misunderstood and so like even like in relationships i feel like i've never been with somebody who a hundred percent just like gets me and understands me and it's a very isolating feeling especially when when i'm going through something when i'm going through a depression or i'm going through mental health there are people who try to help like there are people who reach out and they're like hey you know like come over we can do this this and that but i feel like it's just i i don't want to like when i get in those moods i don't want to be around anybody like i don't want to talk to anybody i don't want to go anywhere because i'm a very like high energy high vibe like you guys watch my videos you could see i'm a very like high energy high vibe person and i'm like always down for whatever always down to have a good time always laughing and smiling and I feel like when I'm like this, I don't want to be around people because what am I going to do to uplift the mood? Nothing. I'm going to sit here and be miserable. And I'd rather do that in the comfort of my own home than be around a million people having to put on a show. Because one thing that I'm not good at doing is like faking the funk. Like I am a Pisces. I am an emotional ass creature. Also have a Libra moon and I wear my heart on my sleeve and if I'm upset about something you're gonna know It's just always how I've been I don't hide my emotions very well Because I feel like why should I have to when I'm not feeling a hundred percent I don't want to be around anybody like I just want to be home Doing my own thing and then when I feel a hundred percent, okay I'll come back outside and all will be well again, but right now it's like I just want to be alone I've just I've suffered with this like crippling loneliness my whole entire life like my whole life where I, even in relationships like I just feel alone like it just it doesn't make sense to me I don't understand it. It's like I can't get to the bottom of it, but what this taught me is that, you know, it, it reflects in my poor relationship choices um, growing up and in my early 20s because, you know, I, my dad wasn't there, you know, from a certain age because he was, you know, struggling with his addiction and my mom, I feel like because she was so stressed because of like my stepdad and uh at the time and um you know she was battling her own things and my mom went through a lot growing up she went through a lot um she went through things that nobody no child no adult no teenager should ever have to go through and my mom had to grow up at a very young age and a lot of the things that she's been through i've been through as well and they're very much so like generational curses and i am basically that curse breaker i've been told by like multiple people that like you know i was the one who was supposed to come and heal the family basically and so a lot of that um puts a lot of pressure on me to heal these wounds and to make sure they don't get passed down to my daughter and her children and their children and th that's a lot of pressure because I never feel like I'm doing a good job. Like, I feel like I'm just always healing. And sometimes I get fucking sick of that shit. Like, it gets really annoying. Sometimes you just always have to be healing or going through something or transforming. And sometimes I'm just like, damn, like, I just want to enjoy life. Like, I just want to wake up, do what I have to do, be a good mom, have my husband, my family, my home, travel, 
have my passive income and my career it's like why does it why does it take so much like why does it take so much for me to finally get this like happy ending you're like a generational curse breaker you have to go through a lot of these things to learn and then to make sure that you know these things don't get passed down to the future generations to come and it's just a lot of fucking pressure but because you know growing up my mom she came from a time where you didn't talk about mental health and if you had something wrong with you you pretty much were just told to like suck it up and that that's life and you know too bad like so sad and I feel for her because of that and I understand a lot of the things that happened when I was younger because of that. It doesn't take away from the fact that, you know, I a lot of times didn't have an emotionally available person there for me because she was dealing with a lot. My mom was going to work and going to school and dealing with my stepdad and he was just like a freaking, a literal child that drank beer constantly um and you know she was worried about him and she my mom was surviving she was worried about a lot and trying to keep a roof over our head and trying to you know keep food on the table and a lot of times you know she was worried about my brother because he was battling his own addictions and demons and he wasn't living with us at the time he was living in the state that we moved from and i just felt like a lot of those times there was just no time for me like there was no room for me there was no if I did bring up an issue or I did bring up something, it's like, you know, I could just tell that, like, there, of course, there were times where my mom genuinely would be, like, concerned and be like, come talk to me, you know, I love you, like, I'm here for you, but then there would be times where it's just like, I could just tell that there just wasn't time for it, there wasn't room for it, um, and when that happens, you know, you deal with a lot of shit by yourself and you deal with it alone, but also what happens is you seek out emotional validation from intimate connections with friends with relationships and you know i just feel like growing up i wanted that attention and that validation and that like distraction like anything to keep me out of my current reality i wanted that so bad and i would just kind of take it from anybody that was willing to give it to me not sexually like i was definitely very like afraid of intimacy growing up i had a lot of intimacy issues because of you know things if you've seen my me too my me too video you know why because of that i had a lot of weird things around intimacy and i was very prude like i never wanted to do anything with anybody and when you're grown i'm sorry when you're a kid like when you're a teenager when you're a teenager, you're still a kid. That's all guys want from you. When they see you're not going to give that, they just go to the next one. And it makes you feel like, wow, like I'm not good enough just as myself. Like I'm only good enough for my body. And that's a whole discussion for another time because women are just so freaking overly sexualized from the age of they're born. And it's just like disgusting. And that's something I can totally go through at another point. But yeah, I just, I would seek this like emotional validation from other people and I never felt like I had like good friends growing up like I always felt like I was that friend that it'd be like oh well you could come if you want or like I would get like a last minute invitation or um you know when we're all walking on the sidewalk I'm the one that's walking behind everybody or like I'm always the last one to know about things or I'm the bunt end of the joke and it's like you know you learn to keep seeking this validation because people will give you little breadcrumbs and they'll give you like the slightest bit of attention and then you want to gravitate towards that because you're like oh my god yes love affection like I need this right now and then just for them to be like I wasn't being serious like I'm just like what like get on my face and it's just like I just felt like I was always like second option to everything and everybody and you know it's not a um it's not a good feeling and it, it causes you to not know how to self-validate and so um you know as I was getting older like when I was younger I didn't get a whole lot of male attention I would get some don't get me wrong but I wouldn't get a lot after I had my daughter and, you know, I was just working on myself, going to school, started going to the gym, started getting really into, like, hair and makeup and just kind of pivoting into this, this, this early stage of womanhood where I'm finding myself. I basically started getting a, a lot of, a lot of, like, male attention. And I didn't know what to do with it because I wasn't used to it. Like, I wasn't used to somebody coming up to me and wanting to get my number or take me out on dates or say I'm beautiful or, you know, any of that. So, like, I feel like when you're a little girl, you learn from relationships, right? And then when you're older, you're like, okay, like, once my prefrontal cortex is fully developed it's like hey like we're not gonna tolerate this but I learned about relationships at like 21 22 like 22 is when I got into my first ever serious relationship 
with Adrian and it was a narcissistic mentally emotionally abusive relationship he was cheating on me all the time um which I didn't know about but even if I knew let's be honest I probably wouldn't have left um I had no self-worth he made sure that my self-confidence was never where it should be and so I found myself at 21 learning lessons that you normally learn at like 15 16 17 and because of that, I feel like it set me behind in relationships because I just didn't know like what a healthy, I knew what a healthy relationship was, but I could never find one because I was just so stuck on trying to get validation from him and trying to get him to just want to freaking cut the bullshit and be with me. And it's like, you can't be a dead horse forever, right? Eventually you got to look at it and be like, okay, rest in peace. But I feel like, you know, it really caused me to have like relationship issues where that's where I would seek my happiness, my validation, because I just I didn't know how to validate myself. And when I started getting all this male attention, I didn't know what to do with it. And I would kind of be afraid to like say no. Like if someone would come up to me at a gas station and be like, hey, can I get your number? I was not that girl to be like, no, get the fuck out of my face like I am now. I was just like, oh, yeah, sure. Because I was so afraid to like say no because I had such like fear around men. Um, because of things that have happened to me where I just was like, if I say no, what if he punches me in the face? Or if I say no, what if he calls me a bitch? Like, and that's another thing that us women too are so, it's so engraved into our brain where it's like, you have to be nice. You always have to say yes. And it's like, no, if a guy comes up to you and asks you for your number and you're uncomfortable, say no. Say no, because they shouldn't be coming up to you and asking you that anyway. Like, leave me alone. I'm just trying to get gas. Shut up. But yeah, I just basically feel a little bit like behind in life because I feel like I learn these lessons a little late and I mean listen everything I've gone through has served a greater purpose you know I'm happy for the way things have gone because I'm here now and I can help you guys and learn and turn it into something greater but I don't know just part of me always feels like I'm like am I ever gonna get to that point where I'm just happy like I'm just in my feminine energy not having to worry and with the love of my life and it's like the thing is too is like I wouldn't say I'm somebody that struggles with being alone I've been alone for so a long time you guys <laughs> like I literally was celibate for a whole year and a half didn't talk to nobody didn't see nobody like after you know i haven't been in a relationship since october of 2021 besides when i was like talking to my ex for a little bit and then when i went out on that date a couple months that's really been it like but like relation no i have not been in one since october of 2021 have been celibate since september of last year it's like you know what I'm saying? It's like, so I have been alone. Like, people always say, like, oh, well, you just, you got to be alone and go on your journey. And, you know, that's when you're going to find God. And that's when everything's going to fall into place. And it's like, girl, I've done all of that before. And it's like, I still just feel like it doesn't do anything. Because it's like, ugh, I don't know. At the end of the day, nobody wants to feel alone. And, like, there was this, um, somebody wrote on facebook and it was like so true it was saying like you know when i put my kids to bed at the end of the day it's just as a single mom it's so lonely and isolating because you have no one to talk to you don't have anyone to share your day with you don't have anyone to it's just like it's silence and you're alone and you're by yourself even like when you're out with your friends and you're having a good time having drinks cool like you come home and you're by yourself you're alone you have nobody to talk to you have no one to converse with and like i love my alone time don't get me wrong i love ordering doordash and sitting here and watching my vampire diaries and cool but like that shit gets so lonely like i'm already a single mom shit's fucking hard enough because uh you know during holidays you go to pumpkin patches alone with your kid alone and you see all these families like together and taking pictures and you know like my daughter's nine like my daughter's nine years old like she doesn't have a father like she's nine and she's never experienced what it's like to have a two family household where the mother and father love each other and are like supporting each other and supporting her like she doesn't know what that's like and it breaks my fucking heart because by now I really thought that I was going to have that for her and I've always wanted another baby but it's like what am I gonna fucking do have another baby now or my daughter's almost a teenager like that doesn't make sense that sounds like going backwards so then like there's times where I just ask myself like damn like maybe it's just not in the cards for me like maybe it's not like 
supposed to happen like you know there are people who are just meant to be alone and i'm like maybe i'm that one fucking person like i don't know i've just i've always felt a lack of community i've always felt the lack of community um like you know i have my parents and they're like supportive like i'm not saying that they're not but i just feel like i just have like a lack of community you know it's like they say it takes a village it's like where the fuck is the village at like i'm really not close with a lot of my family at all um, which sucks, but it's just, it's the fucking truth, and it's, like, debilitating, it, it sucks, like, it's, like, I just feel like I'm always alone, like, all the time, it's just, I'm alone, and, like, nobody talks about that, like, everybody always wants to come on here and be like, oh, hot girl summer, like, oh, like, fuck men, and we don't need them, and, like, I don't care if I'm alone for the rest of my life, and it's, like, that's good for y'all, but that is not what I want for me, like, that's not what I want for me. There's some times where it's, like, I just get so hopeless when it comes to my life because it's like I just I don't have motivation to do anything or go anywhere to even fucking film like it's hard to come on here and tell a story where I'm supposed to be so entertaining when like on the inside all that I want to do is be in my bed and fucking rot away and like if I didn't have to go pick up my daughter in 20 minutes that's what I would be doing all day is just laying in that bed over there rotting away and that's why I'm so I will always be so grateful for Aubrey because she truly, like, saves my life. Because if it wasn't for her, I would probably be like, fuck my job, fuck money, fuck everything. I'm going to just sit in this bed and rot away. But because I have her, I have to be structured. I have to have a routine. I have to be a mom, you know. Motherhood never stops. And that's, like, another thing that's kind of, like, debilitating, too. And I'm not complaining. I'm just venting where it's, like... There's days where, like, I just need a freaking break, and I'm like, I don't want to do this. Like, I don't want to, like, like, I am not feeling okay. Like, I'm depressed right now. The last thing I want to do is, like, have to sit on the floor and put a puzzle together and, like, you know, like, play when I just, like, literally just want to, like, go in my bed and freaking rot away. And, like, when you're a parent, you have no choice. Like, you have to put that brave face on and be okay for your kids when you're like dying inside it's like i don't have time to fall apart and i've i've said this too and there's no fix to that that's the messed up part i've talked about it in therapy so many times where i'm like i don't have time to fall apart and that's why i feel like i sometimes get stuck in like my trauma because i don't have time to fall apart i don't have time to take off from work i don't have time to just lay in bed i don't have time for it because i have a child who needs me and if i don't take care of her who the, nobody else is going to so it's like i don't have time to just sit there and feel like shit because dinner has to be made bills have to be paid and you know like i have a whole human that like needs me and i feel like sometimes i just want like one weekend where i don't have to do anything and i can just chill just be depressed if i want to but I, I can that's another thing too is like it's like the entertainment part of it it's like you have to be a mom and entertain and host and like easter's this weekend and honestly if i'm being so true i couldn't give a rat's ass about easter this weekend i don't even want to do anything i don't want to go anywhere i don't want to go see the easter bunny i don't want to go die nothing like i couldn't give two shits that easter is this weekend couldn't care less and that's sad because I shouldn't feel like that right but it's just like I don't care like I'm losing such an interest for everything like everything 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 I'm losing an interest in my hobbies I'm losing an interest in my fucking friends I'm losing an interest in like doing I don't want to do anything I don't want to do anything nothing my room has been like this for two weeks there's I wish I could show you there's stuff everywhere everywhere i have no motivation to pick it up i will say i did go to the gym today i did eat healthy that's a plus i'm gonna get myself pat on the back for that we're putting on makeup now but like life has just been really weird lately and i just feel i don't know what i feel i just feel so indifferent like i wouldn't say it's a depression it's just like a, like i don't care anymore and like sometimes in life when you stop caring it's like there's only there's only so much stuff one person can go through before you're like i don't even know if i believe in anything anymore i don't know if i believe in god i don't know if i believe in the universe anymore it's like you know i'm supposed to have all of these uh leaders up there like god's supposed to be looking out for me my spirit team and whatever but it's like damn i feel like i'm fucking alone like i feel like i'm abandoned because it's like why am i living this way if i'm supposed to have a divine creator up there who's looking out for me it's like 
it makes you question everything. And I don't mean to get emotional, but it's like when I start questioning my faith in God, that's how I know it's getting bad. Hold on, we're going to line these lips real quick and then talk about it. But yeah, like it just gets hard. It makes you question your faith and everything. It makes you wonder like, why do I always have to be the sacrificial lamb? Like, why do I always have to be the one who's going through things? Like why I look and see other people who have done horrible things in their life that I know have like wrongfully slept with a married man or, or took someone's boyfriend away or like has done horrible things but they're like getting married or they're getting engaged or they're buying houses or they're having their second baby and it's like yo like what the like wh where is my happy ending like why am i because i feel like i do work i do the work i've been working on myself since 20 fucking 16. i've had two therapists i do the work i do my trauma work i try to make good choices i try to help those if they're ever in need i try to be like a good member of society i'm a good mom i have my head on straight like i feel like i do all the right things but i always get the fucking short end of the stick does anybody else feel that way like you're doing all the right things but you like you see everybody else getting all these great it's like at christmas time where like everybody else gets like a freaking um a rolex and then you get like a fucking thing of deodorant it's like damn like everybody else is getting all these speaking of which i need to put this on um i did just take a shower which i'm also gonna pat myself on the back too because if you have depression you know and it's not nasty okay it's just fucking your executive functioning gets off but i just look around sometimes and i'm like yo like god straight up fucking abandoned me like god straight up left me i really feel that way sometimes and it sucks i don't want to feel that way because i love god i know he's there like i know that my spirit team is there but sometimes i really just look around and i'm like yo like y'all left me like like y'all fucking left me because why is this happening? Why am I looking at everybody else and they're just like... <laughs> everything is so good for them. They're so happy. They're in love. They, they're they having kids. They're getting married. They're starting a second. And I'm like, damn. Like, I'm fighting just to keep track of my fucking channel. And it's like, y'all really left me. Why? Like, I don't get it. And then, like, I'll have this, this shit go on in my life where it's, like, things will be so good. And then something happens and everything goes to shit. So it's, like, how can I even be hopeful for a better future when every time I get one, it's taken away? Like, something happens every time. So it makes you lose faith. It really does. And that sucks because nobody ever wants to lose faith or look up and be like, God, are you even there? Are you even fucking real? Because this is not how my life is supposed to go. Like, this is not what I had planned. It just gets so frustrating sometimes, you guys. Like, it really, really does. And then it causes you to, like, get in this dark hole and you know you have to pull yourself out. But you know that that shit's hard. And, like, I pulled myself out of a dark hole before. I'm gonna get out of this. I'm going to be fine. But it's just, like, damn, for the time being, it's like, I'm so tired of healing. I'm so tired of showing up every week at therapy and doing the work. I'm so tired of having to always learn from all these experiences in my life instead of just being able to have a good experience and fucking enjoy it. I'm tired of having anxiety. I'm tired of having OCD. I'm tired of my mental health being shit. I'm tired of the way my body looks and gaining weight. I'm tired of being a single parent and having no help. I'm just tired. Like, I'm fucking tired. Like, sometimes you just can't even fight anymore because all your fight is done. It's like, damn, like, this is not what life is about. We were not brought here to struggle. We were not brought here to feel this way. Like, we were brought here human connection. That is the whole reason why we are here on Earth is to connect with humans and to love and be loved. And... I just feel like I got the short end of the stick with that shit. Always. Always, always, always. And it fucking sucks. And it's like, see other people who they have not even taken a, a, a little inch in their healing journey. And they like met the man of their dreams and like they're perfect and happy. And I'm so happy for them. Don't get me wrong. I'm not like a hater. But I'm like, 
I'm over here like actually doing my shit, like doing my healing journey, going through my work, practicing celibacy, trying to get closer to God, trying to do what I have to do. And it's just like, damn, like it's just like everything just like beating me down, bro. And it's like, how am I supposed to even want to change anything if every time I try, it's like I get put two steps further and something knocks me down and I get put fucking ten steps back? Like, that shit's hard. And nobody talks about it. I don't see anybody coming on here and talking about loneliness and how crippling it could be and how, like, debil like literally, like, because everyone's always like, oh, you got to be alone to heal. Girl, I do everything alone. I work alone at my house. I'm alone in parenthood. I am alone in life when it comes to love, especially. Yes, I have friends. Don't get me wrong. But do I see them all that often? No, not really. I'm alone in everything. So what do you mean? Like, I feel like sometimes what happens is, and you guys can tell me below if you feel this way too, but... You kind of just get into this mode where you're like, fuck it, I don't even care. Like, if life is going to be this way, then cool, life is going to be this way. And I'm just going to make some irrational ass decisions because fuck it, like, life sucks anyway, so why not spice it up, you know? And then I feel like I do stuff like that and I'll just make, like, bad choices. And then I put myself back five million years, like... <laughs> Sometimes I just feel like I'm regressing and I feel like sometimes I'm regressing because like I used to have my life so together y'all like I had my own apartment I was making good money. Well de good, decent money um, I was going to school. I had my you know whole life set out like my whole five-year plan You know like everything was great super independent and on my own and I just feel like it all came crashing down and you know, sometimes I wonder if it's because I was stuck in survival mode for so long. I was so in like that masculine energy where it's like, you have to get this done. You have to do this. You have to do that. There was no time to be in your feminine soft energy where you're just flourishing and taking care of yourself. Like, no girl, when bills got to be paid and children got to get fed, there is no sitting there and taking care of yourself. You got to take care of your bills and you got to take care of your baby and, you know, make sure that she's good and there's no time for you and I just feel like because I was stuck in survival mode like I wasn't happy like don't get me wrong I had all those things but like I wasn't happy like I was just like in survival mode on autopilot every freaking day and I think that's maybe why I used to have my life so together was because I was stuck in survival mode like there's a difference between having your life together but not having any time to enjoy it because you're working so much and having your life together but like you have a passive income that allows you to chill a little bit and make decisions and do what you want to do and like have this freedom right there's a, there's such a difference and I definitely did not have that back then at all um and I think maybe that's why my life was so together because I was stuck in survival mode and I think that's why I'm almost like regressing in life like my brain is just like regressing because it's like I was in survival mode for so long that now my brain is learning how to be in not survival mode but then it's like I have a hard time getting things done if I'm not in survival mode because there's no energy there's no urgency to do does that make sense I don't know maybe I'm not making sense to anybody maybe someone's gonna watch this and call the loony bin police on me who freaking knows but like yeah like life is just weird life is weird and I'm in this in-between stage where it's like I have no idea what I'm doing. I have no idea where I'm going. I have no idea who I'm becoming. Sometimes I wake up, I look in the mirror, and I'm like, I don't fucking know who I am. It's so weird. And maybe, just maybe, there's a purpose in this. Like, maybe this all needs to happen because maybe the person who I was is not who I should be right now. Or maybe who I'm becoming is going to cost me who I was. And that needs to be completely dismantled and let go of before I can be who I need to become. Like maybe it's like, you know, like when you, it's like insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different outcome. Sometimes when you are trying to be the same person you were five years ago, it doesn't work because it's not in alignment. You're not supposed to be that person. If you were supposed to be that person, this would have been like fucking 2017, right? Um, but no, like we're in 2023, like it's time to change. Like you can't, you can't be who you were if you want to become who you are. And I feel like I'm just always stuck in the past. Like, I'm stuck in past situations I didn't get closure from. I'm stuck in past things that have happened to me. And it's like, I I have a hard time moving on from things and letting things go. Especially if it's like a relationship, per se. Like, 
if it ends and there's just like no closure it's like i will drive myself fucking crazy wondering what happened why did it end etc and then i'll find out like four months later like something that they did behind my back and i'm like oh that's why it ended because i was being protected but it's like i spent all that time worrying and analyzing when life is gonna freaking go on anyway and i ruined probably some good experiences i could have had because i was just so worried about a relationship that i'm not even in anymore that was taken away from me for a reason so yeah um just feel like sometimes i'm regressing and i don't like that because i don't want to be regressing who wants to be going backwards not me but i know what i have to do i know the choices i have to make i know the things i need to do in order to become who i need to be and be happy and healthy and attract this life that i want but it's going to you know some people won't ever be who they're supposed to be because they're too caught up in who they were and you have to let go of who you were to be who you want to become. Then I'm having a hard time letting go of my past right now because there's certain things that the moment I know I'm doing that I can't take with me if I want to be successful. Like certain habits and certain people I hang out around and um, those things, people and places can't come with me to where I'm going. But I have such a hard time letting go. Like I don't know what the fuck it is you guys but... I have the hardest time like letting go of things and moving on and like we'll just it, it will drive me crazy if I don't have answers to something it's not normal it's not normal like it's not normal to make yourself sick over not like I'm such an analytical person that like I need answers to things and when I don't have those answers I go insane I'm not talking about insane as in like you know that guy from uh, that had like the 13 personalities or whatever i'm not talking about insane like that i just mean like i will stay up till three in the morning just sitting here looking at the wall like thinking and it's not normal sometimes i feel like i got it all figured out i got this perfect plan this perfect vision and it's just like never mind i don't know I don't know where I'm going. I don't know where I'm headed. I don't know anything right now. And maybe that's not a bad thing. Maybe a couple years from now, I'll look back and I'll be like, Dakota, you're fucking fine. You were worried and stressed for no reason. I need to start finding Dakota again. I need to start finding what makes me happy. What sparks joy. And like uh, somebody in my last video was like, your eyes look so sad in this video. And it's like, I am sad. Like, I'm not happy right now. I'm not happy right now. And I'm not okay. But that's all right. Because that's life, you know? <sighs> you're going to have moments in life that are wonderful and that are going to uplift you. And then you're going to have moments in life that sink you to the ground. And you're going to think that you're never going to come out of it and you're just going to pray to get it through the next day and with each and every day as time passes it gets better and you come out of it and you look back and then you share your story to help others like i know this part of my chapter is going to help somebody one day like everything i'm going through right now is going to help somebody one day in their their life this is right now me basically just having to write out this trial you know and they'll turn it into my testimony and it'll be like a survival guide for somebody else but if you are going through a tough time right now you're not alone you're not alone and please just do not come on here and compare yourself to these other people on social media who only highlight the good experiences and don't speak upon or shed light on the bad one because it's not real we all go through stuff beyonce goes through stuff like you know what i mean like we all go through things and don't feel bad for me because i'm going to be okay and there's so much to be thankful for and blessed but i'd be lying if i said that life was good right now it's just not i'm not happy i i genuinely when i sit here and i try to think back on the last time that i was happy like genuinely happy and loved life i couldn't tell you i couldn't tell you it's sad because i'm 29 the youngest years of my life that i'm never gonna get back and it pains me like it truly and honestly pains me 
that I'm going to look back one day and realize that I s wasted the youngest years of my life being sad. Being up depressed, being this. Sure, you know, I could go get a new wig tomorrow. I can get my nails done. I can get my lashes put in. I can go take a vacation, you know. But like when all of that is said and done and you're in the bed by yourself every night, you still come back to square one. But this is not how my story ends. This is, I refuse to have this be what my life is. I, I refuse because I know something's got to give. If things could be so bad right now, I know that things can be equally as good on the opposite side of that. I don't know what that's going to take. I don't know if it's going to take a lifestyle change. I don't know if it's going to take me like moving fucking somewhere new. Because sometimes I just want to get out of Connecticut so bad. Connecticut's so big, but it's so small. And everybody knows everyone. And it's just like, I can't stand it some days. I just want to like move to a new country and just disappear. really what I want to do. But that's not going to cure anything. <laughs> that's just me like wishful thinking. Like, um disappearing but that doesn't fix anything you could change your location you could change your outside appearance all you want you could change your room around but it's never gonna fix that inner chaos and i need to figure out why i feel this way all the time i just want to come on here and be real and transparent with you guys because i know that i'm definitely not the only person feeling this right now and i'm definitely not the only person who's going through something and there's someone out there who has it way worse than I do and maybe this video will bring you some sort of comfort within knowing like oh my god I'm not alone thank god because I thought I was going crazy or oh like that's what I'm going through this brings me a lot of confirmation that I'm not the only one or oh I've been through this and I know when I was going through it I wish I had somebody to make a video like this so yeah like I hope it just brings you something and don't feel bad for me guys i'm gonna be okay i'm going to be okay i feel like again suffering is truly alleviated when we realize that we aren't going through it alone there's other people out there who are also struggling I just feel like people don't talk about struggle enough or maybe they're not in the position to talk about struggling because they're not struggling and that's fine and i that's great but the fact of the matter is i think there's more of us out here struggling then there are then there are people out here who are happy and that's just so fucked up too i feel like 80 percent of the population is just so unhappy and it's like why like we weren't brought here to be there's no way that this could be life like there's no way there's no way there's no way that god brought us here to to feel like this there's no way there's no way that God brought us here for us to wake up this miserable every day. There has to be something, like, better than this. There has to be more to live for. Like, something's got to give. So, yeah, guys. Um, thank you. Just, I... There's so much I want to say. But I don't have the words because I'm just not here but i will say that you guys have saved me in multiple multiple ways i feel like i really don't have anyone in my life who truly understands me i don't feel like i have anyone in my life who truly knows me in and out but with you guys i feel like i have that like i said i really don't have family so my parents um and you guys are my family you guys make up for that in so many ways and you are my best friends like really like when i get a video i mean oh my god dakota <laughs> video when i get a message from you guys saying oh my god i'm crying I'm, i have my period today i just got it so please just don't judge me when i get a message from you guys saying how much i've saved your life or how much I've helped you, or I am the reason for you getting out of a toxic relationship, or loving yourself, um, 
that is what keeps me going. That is what keeps me going. That is what keeps me grounded. That's what keeps me stable. Oh my god, no, we're not gonna cry. You guys are what keep me going. You and my daughter are what keep me going. I'll never be able to repay you guys for what you've done for me. Truly, never. Um, you guys gave me this platform, right, for me to even be on here in the first place talking to you. And that is the greatest gift I've ever gotten. That is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. Is y'all. Just thank you. I truly love you guys. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Subscribe. Turn your post notifications on. Leave a comment down below. Let me know why you follow me. Do you follow me because I uplift you? Do you follow me because I, you know, am entertaining and I take you out of your day for a short period of time? What is it? Because I feel like I want to start making different content. Than I'm so done talking about my past. I'm so done living in my past. I want to teach life lessons, valuable things of like the now, like what's going on now, what's happening now, who Dakota is now and not who she was when she was 23, 24, 25, 26, 17, like I'm just ready for a new beginning, a fresh start. And that's not gonna happen if I'm always sitting here talking about the past and people from my past that aren't even relevant to me anymore to be a hundred like I think about these people twice I think sometimes new beginnings come from painful endings and I think this year is about me facing those those painful endings so I can reap the new beginnings <sighs> thank you guys for watching I don't really know how to end this video because I'm a mess right now but thank you your days are coming they have to it's going to get better. It has to. You are strong. You are beautiful. You are capable. You have survived 99% of your worst days. This is nothing. I love you guys. Bye. Baby, I wonder, would you just put your sweats on, put your sweats on for me? Yeah. I got the blood.